Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Ashley Joyce. If you are not a subscriber, I, 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 I can't even finish that sentence. Like, if you're not a subscriber, like, what? what just, just subscribe. Just, just, just support. Just, just, you know, I can't even finish that sentence because if you're not a subscriber by now, I'm feeling some type of way. Like, you're on this video, but you're not subscribed to my channel. Like, I'm feeling some type of way. So just go ahead. I'm going to just imagine you already subscribed. I'm going to just imagine in my head that that button underneath there already says subscribe. That little notification bell is already on. I'm just going to speak that into existence. If you're not going to do it, I'm just going to speak that into existence. So I'm going to just let you do that. If you haven't, <laughs> okay, I'm just playing. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel, Ashley Joys. Once again, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. Today's video, we're gonna be talking all about PCOS. It is a video that I get a lot of questions or something that I talked about in the previous video and a lot of people ask me questions about. And I'm like, you know what? So this is, um, I'm on a healthcare journey, like self-love journey, all that stuff. And that comes with ups and downs. That comes with everything that you can go through. And so since there's a lot of women out there who may be dealing with this and just don't know it, I'm going to tell you guys my PCOS journey. So, you know, I'm going to use terms and everything. So don't get squeamish on me now. Just keep in mind, I want to see the doctor. So these type of things don't bother me to talk about. But um, this is definitely for my women out there. Or if you are a man and you know your woman or your sister or somebody is going through something like this, refer them to this video or let them know that they should just go get an evaluation just to make sure they're good but anyway we're gonna get straight into this video so that i'm not rambling too long and y'all i know this is different you know trying to test out some new things this is actually my mom's shirt and my mom's other shirt that i've made into like a cute little headband i don't even know what vibe i got going on right now but you know we just go i don't know what that means let's get into it boom already wrote out a whole list of okay you can't see that i already wrote down a whole list of like a like a but i wrote down a you know what i, I can't I, uh, let's just get into the video so the first thing is what is pcos so pcos is polycystic ovarian syndrome now it's a syndrome right meaning it has multiple things that it can have a symptoms and can cause and x y and z but y'all we're not about to get real deep into it i'm gonna just give y'all a surface overview of everything like how i found out uh, what symptoms was i having what does it look like for me now and what i'm going to do about it and i'm gonna tell you guys some tips on when you should get checked for it um and things like that so yeah so the first thing is um, as I said, PCOS is a syndrome and it's something that affects women's menstrual cycles, but it's mainly going to affect um, your insulin for the most part because ultimately PCOS is insulin resistance and that's diabetes, basically. So um, the hormones that are in your body, they're unbalanced and those particular hormones not being in balance can make it easier for you to get things like insulin resistance. Um, unfortunately heart disease things like that because those hormones affect the heart it affects the blood vessels and all of that so that's why you want these things to be in balance when things are out of balance it messes with other things that's just life in general like it's not even just PCOS you can have any type of imbalance in your body and it'll make you feel or have certain symptoms so that's all PCOS is is it's, it's in an imbalance I can't talk it's in imbalance Try saying that three times fast. <gasps> Got it out. Um, so yeah, that's what it is, right? Um, and it can cause things like, like I said, irregular periods. It can cause cramps um, for you to have cysts in your ovaries. My mom was just coughing. You all right? All right, cool. Uh, it can cause you to have like cysts in your ovaries. It can cause you to become infertile. Um, it can cause you to, like I said, insulin resistance, pre-diabetes, mood disorders, imbalance, hormones, hair all over the place, like thick hair, not just normal hair, like thick patches of hair. Um, like me, like I, I don't know if you guys can see this underneath here, like that's hair, mustache, hair everywhere. Like that's what it can ultimately show up as. Um, and so much more, but we're just, that's just like the basis. But how did I find, found, find, how did I find? Find, find. 
this maybe it's this scarf is too tight like i don't know why my brain is just jack is messing up everything that i'm saying um maybe it's the cold i don't know i'm blaming everything maybe i'm just I need to go back to school how did i find out well let's start with the beginning so let's go back to when i was in high school no 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 no. let's go back to my first period ever i believe i was a little, little, little. I was in elementary, so I had to be between 11 and 12 years old. I think it was my last year in elementary school. And I started my cycle, and I remember when I did, because I was like, what the heck? And I, I told my mom and my grandma, like, my grandma was on the phone. I'm like, what is going on? And she's like, she explained it to me. And I kind of knew, because in school they had this little, um, like, seminar, and they talked to us about it, but I didn't really know, you know. So when they when my mom and them told me, I was, they was like, that's what's happening to you. I was like, oh, dang it, I'm young. Why does gotta happen to me? You know, but whatever, it is what it is. So that was that. Now, after that cycle, I did not have another one for a whole year. And I remember, because I thought every month it was gonna happen like clockwork, because my best friend at the time, she had already had her cycle since she was 11. She had like really big boobs, all that. Like she developed early. And, <coughs> am I you good? We getting over cold so excuse the sniffles and stuff but um she had really big boobs she had like um you know started her cycle early and everything she developed early so she told me yeah you gonna get it every month it's gonna come every month so i waited for the next month like hmm still not here like where is it hello where are you okay cool maybe next month they gonna come it's gonna come back no six months later mm -mm, a year nope still not there now the reason why i'm bringing this up is because that's normal for some people um especially after your first cycle but for me i'm looking back i think that might have been an indication but they never looked deeply into it at all they just said it was normal so i didn't think nothing about it kept going about my life and then it came back so when it came back i had it consistently and then i get to high school High school, it was consistent, but I do remember I didn't really have bad cycles like that. Like, for the most part, I got headaches, I got tired, I got irritated. Like, that was pretty much it. But I do remember my last year in high school, I used to get these weird cramps in the middle of my cycle every month. And I didn't think nothing of it. I thought it was just my body, how my body was. Because that's typically what they tell you. Oh, girl, it's nothing. You're fine. That's just your body. That's how it is. It's nothing. You just, you just, you know, do, do, do. That's what they said. So I was like, okay, cool. Ain't nothing. Kept going about my life. Get to college. This is when I realized something wasn't right. So I know right now I'm not really seeing a lot of symptoms that's making it seem like, oh, something is wrong just because my cycle didn't come for a whole year, just because I had these middle pains in the middle of the month. That might sound like something that's normal. But let me tell you the biggest factor that made me realize something wasn't right. And this is why all my ladies out there, I need you to pay attention to your intuition like for real like seriously because i knew like i knew something wasn't right but and i thought you know what i deal with anxiety i'm a hypochondriac it's probably just me being like you know a little over dramatic but deep down in my gut something just seemed off and it wasn't like i had all these crazy symptoms i just knew like uh, this is not normal like I'm getting these pains in the middle of the month. They told me it's nothing. My cycle sometimes would not come for months at a time. Oh, that's another thing. Sometimes my cycle was not regular. Like, it would come, like, two months later, three months later. And then sometimes it would be really, really light. And then sometimes it would be really, really heavy. Then sometimes it would be, like, um, it would last. Oh, that's another thing. My cycle would typically last five to ten days. But usually, I'm sorry, seven to ten days. But usually ten days. Like, ten days. Ten that was another thing that's been throughout my whole life but i didn't think much of it because i thought that was normal because that was normal for me so get to college something told me something wasn't right i'm like mm, no something's not right i don't know what it is i wasn't even like i just knew so i went to the doctor i told her like yeah you know i'm having these pains in the middle of the month i feel like i'm having these cramps on one side of my stomach and then on the other side it just be like it'll just it was weird y'all because i would have this pain on this side of my stomach and then it'll like travel and then it'll just like have this big pain and it'll go away. So she was like, oh, that's called middle smirts. Like that's when you ovulate. That's called ovulation pains. Unfortunately, there's like 20% of women 
who experience it. So meaning like out of every 10 people, I'm sorry, out of every 100 people, 20 people will experience that. Now, if you break it down out of every 10 people, two people will experience it. So I'm thinking, oh, that's all it is. Oh, all this time I thought it was something more. No, it's just middle smirk. Sm sm so, okay, cool. I look it up. I look it up and I see all the definitions and I'm like, okay, cool. That's probably all I'm dealing with. Cool. That's no problem. So I go about my life again. We go through our college and I ended up getting on birth control. That is the biggest regret I have with putting something in my body like I know like and I'm not down to anybody who's on it I know people are on it for different reasons but my perception of birth control it may not match yours, so please don't get offended by what I'm about to say but I do not believe this is just my personal opinion like once again if you have to be on it I'm, I have a lot most of my friends are on it so I have nothing against it but it's just if you don't have to be on it I highly suggest don't because if you really look into it there's so many things about birth control that is not good for your body and i know i'm gonna have a lot of people over here like no yes it is it's it, 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 like it's gonna be a lot of different opinions and that's okay but what i'm saying is a lot of people i know it messed up their body in the long run maybe not during the time they was taking it but after because unless they keep in mind birth control started off as a way for people to balance out their hormones it was something from people medically who had medical like medical issues that needed it but then when they discovered that it was a way to stop women from getting pregnant, then they started to use it as another form of medication to stop them from getting pregnant, to control their fertility, which is understandable. You may not want to, you know, have a child right now. I get that. But if it's other ways that you can find that it's not going to put hormones in your body, don't do it. Because I'm going to tell you, after I did that, like, it messed my body up so bad, y'all. Like, first of all, let me just tell you, when I was on it, my, my, I was on it for two years. I tried like four different ones because they kept messing me up, right? Like the first one it was making me feel really sad. Like I was watching, um, why did I get, why did I get married? I watched that movie many, many times. I have never cried. Tell me why I'm on birth control. Like literally I'm sitting there and I'm watching the same scene I've been seeing for years. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> like crying. Like what the, it's wrong. I'm over here crying. Like what wrong with me? Let me cry like that. So I'm like, uh-uh, 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 this ain't uh-uh, I ain't uh-uh, this making me emotional, what's happening, mm-mm, mm-mm, so got off of that one, got on a different one, different one, it was making me, uh, oh, my blood pressure, so throughout this whole time, my blood pressure has always been average, but when I was on that stuff, it made my blood pressure be elevated the entire time I was on it, that was another reason they was watching it, like, mm, you might not be able to be on this, keep in mind, also, it's not for everybody, so... <laughs> not for everybody some people honestly i feel like if you're on it for a short period of time okay cool whatever like whatever do your thing because some people are on it for different reasons if you want it for medically if you want it for for different reasons that outweigh the risk okay cool go for it but for me it didn't so anyway like my blood pressure was up and then they were like oh yeah we have to watch you see what's going on with that why is your pressure up and it just kept staying up they don't know why but it was staying up so they was okay yeah let's switch it they put me on the lower one and that one was oh that one was making me feel like, I don't know, like just off. And then my cycle, y'all, the whole time, the whole two years I was on birth control, it made my cycle so heavy and so bad every month. It was shorter, and I knew exactly when it was going to be, but it was terrible. So anyway, at that time, I couldn't really notice that my cycle was irregular. This is the reason why I'm bringing it up, because I was on that, and it took me, like every month I knew exactly because I was on these hormones. So whatever, cool finally decided to get off of it and when i did let me tell y'all when i did i got off of it and then like it was two years later this is after right after i graduated college and i was still i was mm, no yeah no i wasn't in school no more i had graduated at that point i was back in detroit so let's go backwards for a second before i got off of it i remember my I'm recording. Don't nobody come in here. Sorry. But, um, I remember before I went back home to Detroit. I was on it still, and I had to get my gallbladder removed. And I really believe, y'all. Some people might think I'm being dramatic, or like, y'all might not believe me, but I believe that my gallbladder had to get removed because of that birth control. Like, I don't. I feel like something about it it threw my body off even more. 
and I've never had issues with my gallbladder or anything like that. I was eating decent, decent at that time. It didn't make sense for me to have a gallstone, and I feel like that medicine has something to do with it because when I remember one day, now I got off of it and I was looking through the like the little pamphlet for some reason. I'm just reading all of the symptoms, all of the side effects, all of the possible side effects, and tell me why on there one of the things it said was gallbladder. Um, disease or something like that or it could affect your gallbladder. I'm like what hold the Yo, I just got my gallbladder removed. So I that's what I believe that that's what I believe I believe it. I don't know why I just do so I'm, I'm believing in my intuition But anyway, that was that it took me a whole eight months to even get my cycle back And when I did my blood pressure right away went right back to normal. So right when I got off of it It went right back to normal so now my cycle was irregular because I just got off these hormones. So now I'm having these irregular cycles. But I'm not thinking about anything deeper. I'm thinking, oh, it's just because I just got off of this. And... But even still, something didn't seem right. But whatever. We keep moving on with life. I move out to Arizona. Cycle's still kind of weird sometimes. Like, it be normal, but then I don't know where it don't be normal. And every month, every other month, something is happening where it's either longer than normal, shorter than normal. Um, I'm having these weird, like, anxiety and, and all this other stuff. Also, when I got off of um, birth control, I started dealing with bad anxiety, too. I don't know if it's, I don't know if that was just life or hormone. I don't even want to put which one, too. Oh, my gosh. I'm so mad that this big old bump is just sitting there. But, whatever. So, anyway, um, move out to Arizona. And, you know, I'm just like, hmm. You know, like, it was a, oh. This is a part that you guys may not know, and I really don't necessarily want to talk about it, but I will tell you guys. Um, when I first moved out to Arizona, that was another thing that threw me off because my cycle was irregular, and I did have a miscarriage. And I never talked about it. I never talked about it on here, on YouTube. Nobody, a lot of people don't know about that. I'm not going to go into details. I thought about it so many times about telling a story about it to help other women. But to be honest, I just don't want to. So I'm not going to. If I ever decide to, I will. But right now, I just don't want to. Um, Yeah, so that happened. That was another thing. But honestly, I didn't think deep of that because that happens all the time to a lot of women. So, you know, not thinking much of it. It was a time. It was hard. It was a hard time in my life at that time. But in my life at that time, I was dealing with bad anxiety, bad, like, panic attacks and I feel like I can't imagine had I had a child I don't even know how I would have been able to focus on myself and get my mind right I think everything happens for a reason and you know that beautiful angel my beautiful angel is in heaven looking down on me at all times so I'm just so grateful for that but at the end of the day that happened and um moving forward you know my cycle got back to normal everything was cool but it was still going back and forth and this is when I decided to get it checked. I end up going to a holistic doctor. I was like, you know what? I'm tired of going to these regular doctors who only want to prescribe me medications. I still do have a regular doctor or a modern doctor, but I was like, I want to go somewhere where they want to look um, at me as a whole person, right? And I became vegan at this time. I was working on my health, my fitness. Um, I was going to therapy. I was working on all these things with myself, right? So I go to this doctor and I explain. And this, I love the doctor that I go to. It's a holistic doctor. I was literally, um, I was literally. I was like, I don't know how to explain it. I was at the doctor's office and I just felt like this was a place where I needed to be. Like God guided me here. Like I was praying about finding a holistic doctor and out of nowhere, this dropped into my lap. So anyway, I go through the whole process. I talk to the doctor. Now, the thing I love about this place is if you move to Arizona, DM me if you are a woman and you want to know about this doctor because I can definitely refer you to them. They're amazing um, and they take pretty much almost all insurances and it's also a spa, which I love But um, and it's holistic and it's modern So they like com they combine everything and come up with the best thing for women and it's a women's health doctor So this is not going to be your PCP. It's gonna be more like a gynecologist women health stuff like that But they focus on you as a whole person though. So it feels like it's your regular regular doctor So the first appointment was two hours long. They ask you all these questions. What do you eat? What's your stress level like are you in a relationship? Are you like what is your religious beliefs like? What was your childhood like? They ask you these questions, like, what type of stuff did you eat? Like, um, what was your health like, health conditions? Like, they want to know everything about you. Like, how are you, like, physically, spiritually, everything. And um, that's why I love this. That's why I love this doctor's office because they really want to know all about you. And when I told them everything, I told them about my cycle. My cycle wasn't really coming normally. She immediately was like, okay, we're going to test you for yada, yada, yada. They took my blood test and everything. Like, they, it wasn't like a normal appointment. Like, you know, you go to the doctor, you go in there, they check you to ask you questions. They might send you off to a lab. No, they have a lab in there. So she was like, okay, 
They checked my thyroid. They checked my heart. They checked everything. I was like, dang, they wanted to know what I was eating. How was my diet? Like, and I told them I was newly vegan. They had me sit down to talk to somebody about that. Like, they was asking me, making sure I had all the right nutrients. Like, all of this. Like, y'all. Like, this is what doctors are supposed to do. Care about you as a whole person, not just... But I get it. They, a lot of doctors are busy. Like, you guys, I used to want to be a doctor. I still want to be a um, doctor, but... And I've shadowed many doctors. They have time crunches. They don't try to just come in there and <laughs> leave out. Like, they literally have patient after patient after patient. So, it's, sometimes it's hard for them to build that relationship. Um, that's why if I ever become a doctor, I do want to work in, a, um, in like, a... A, a, a family practice or something like that or pediatrics or something like that but family practice or holistic so anyway um so she asked me all these questions they take my blood and then they called me back like a week later and it was like yeah um your you know your hormones are all over the place like they're they're Im imbalanced and we want to bring you back in and just want to double check and see what's going on then they name all these options to me what it might be and one of the things she named at the end was PCOS. And she was like, yeah, and it's a possibility is this. And she gave me this pamphlet. And I'm reading the pamphlet. And I'm like, uh-uh, diabetes? Hold on. Infertility? Like, this ain't what I got. Mm -mm, nope. I, automa I, I, I automatically just assumed, like, nope, that's not, that's not it. Like, it's something different. So, um, anyway, they did more tests. And it came back that it was more than likely PCOS. So she told me that. But they cannot diagnose it until they did an ultrasound to look at my ovaries. So I'm like, wait, what? Hold on, pause, freeze. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why and why why haven't I ever heard of this PCOS? I was in medical field. I ain't never heard of this. What is this? Like, what do you mean? Infertile? Hold on. I diabetes. Like, I'm like, what? So I legit was just just <laughs> but as I ran into it, I was like, dang, I really think this is what I have. Like, I deal with the mood disorder. Um, I had that miscarriage. My cycle is irregular. I be like hormonal and emotional. Like I deal with anxiety. Like everything it was naming. I'm looking at. I shut. Oh, I turned off Google so fast. Like click. I ain't looking into this. I ain't claiming this over my life. Even though in my heart I feel like this is it. This is what's been causing me to feel like this. Like it was like almost like you looking for something and you finally found it. Even though you you wasn't at the time looking for it. It was just like so. When when I read it, I was just in denial, like, this can't be it. So I just I just left it alone. She told me herself. So they did the ultrasound. They did everything to make sure that it aligned. And sure enough, it did. It's exactly what it was. So she told me, like, yeah, you have PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, she's like, you know, don't worry too much. I know it's hard. You look all over the line. And it says, like, you become infertile and yeah, 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 yeah. Like, no. Like, we're going to focus on balancing your hormones. You're eating healthy. You're being whole as a whole person physically, financially, spiritually, emotionally, in balance as a woman. Um, and we can also put you on different things like birth control, progesterone. There's so many options as well because I told you it's a holistic doctor, but they also do modern practices. It's modern doctors in there too. So, they're giving me all of my options, and I decided to take the route holistically. So, I decided to go through eating healthy, all the other stuff, and my hormones, I have to get them checked every three to six months um, just to make sure I don't have any insulin resistance, to make sure I don't have, you know, certain things going on. Um, now, the symptoms that I had after I found out that I had PCOS that I noticed more than anything was I would get, first of all, my periods became completely irregular. I would get a cycle like twice a month. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, twice, um, yeah, twice a month to twice a year so it was one or the other like right now i probably have my last cycle i had i had one last month and a month before that but before that i didn't have one till six months ago and then before that it was six months so i had like two in one year so yeah um so i decided to take the healthy route though like the holistic route by trying to eat healthy exercise and that is not working like it's not my hormones are still imbalanced so i know i have to do more than that and let me show you what i end up getting so it's expensive but i'm gonna show you And she is. Yeah. This is expensive, expensive. Woo, Jesus. Um, <laughs> let me stop. But yeah, so I decided. So basically, my doctor told me recently, like your um, progesterone is high, which is, or I'm sorry, prolactin, which is a hormone that you get when you're pregnant and you're breastfeeding. I'm not pregnant and I'm not breastfeeding. Am I trying to be pregnant? And I can't even get pregnant right now because I'm not doing anything. So it's just like you know, um. I shouldn't be having progesterone in my system. So they, she told me like, yeah, so that can either be the PCOS 
or you may have a pituitary tumor in your brain. I was like, wait, what? Hold on. Wait, how, how, wait, hold the heck on. What you mean? Like a pituitary tumor in my brain. So anyway, y'all don't know yet. I have to go get my MRI done. I'm getting that done next week. But so I'm not gonna worry about that. Just pray, pray for me. Just pray that it's not it. That it's just a PCOS. But if it is a pituitary tumor, she said, don't worry too much. Like usually they're small. They're benign. 99.9% of the time. And, you know, like, usually they can treat it by just watching it, um, by giving you medications to shrink it. There's so many options, or you can get it pulled, like, the tumor pulled out through your nose. So, there's just so many things. And then, and, and then worst case scenarios are out there, too, but we're not going to think about that. We're just going to pray that it's not that. But in the meantime, regardless, um, what I'm doing to try to balance out. So, I'm going to be starting these by phasic tinctures soon and it, there's two of them so here's one um i don't know if you guys can see but it's like a liquid and you it's herbal right so this is a liquid and it has a little dropper and it smells disgusting oof oof it smells strong y'all i don't know how i'm about to do this but i haven't done them yet i haven't started them if you guys want to know how these work or what they like how they affect me let me know in the comment section below and I'll be sure to do that. But um, these are biphasic tinctures. So you have to take part one, the first 14 days of your cycle. So whenever I start my cycle again, I take a half a teaspoon two times a day and a small amount of water. And this is day one through 14 of menstrual cycle. So this is the day that you're actually on your cycle, right? And ovulation through that of the start. This is part two. You take, do the same thing and you take this one day 15 through 28. So this is 28 days that you're going to be taking this every day and have to do this for three months to see if we can balance out my hormones naturally through these natural herbs. And these are just like uh, herbal extracts and things like that. So these are natural. I don't know how my body's going to respond to it. So I'm a little nervous, but at the same time, I have to get this under control. The takeaway. So I know this video is long, but I feel like it needs to be said because there are so many women out here who are going through things that they do not know what's happening with their bodies. I personally didn't know what was happening with my body and I had to do something about it. So now I'm at a point where I'm on this holistic journey. I'm on this health and mental journey where I'm trying to get my mental mind right, my self-love, all that stuff. But I want you guys to also be at a point in your life, especially the women out there, where you can see what's going on with you so you can get that under control so that you can have everything that God has for you. I don't want to become infertile. I don't want to get diabetes. So I have to do something about this now so that I don't look up and not have known. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, you got all these other situations going. So the takeaway to all my women out there is the first thing is if you're having irregular periods, that is not normal. I don't care. Don't let them tell you that it is. It is not normal normal i don't care how normal that was for you growing up it's not like as a woman your body is supposed to be able to take in what it needs to take in and let out what it's supposed to let out if you know what i'm saying and if it doesn't there's something going on it might be something super small like you're just stressed out or it might be something like me pcos or whatever or whatever or whatever but don't let them tell you that it's normal like don't like be an advocate for your health and see what's going on that's the first thing the second thing is if you're having painful periods like really bad that is not normal either your cycle is not supposed to be so painful that you're miserable that is not normal we are not meant to have that much pain every single month yes it's going to be uncomfortable but if you're doubled over and you cannot breathe and you're crying that is not normal get that checked out i know it's healthcare in this world right now is a little all over the place but make sure you put your health first that's not normal so get that check out checked out if your cycle is not regular that's also not normal so you need to get that checked out as well if, if if you're having difficulty getting pregnant you're trying to get pregnant check into that as well see what's going on you know just all this is not to scare you guys it's simply to make you aware so that you can make sure that you are giving yourself the optimal health that you deserve like just saying Look into family history. Ask your parents, your grandparents, how was their cycle? What was it like for them? Because a lot of this stuff is hereditary. It is genetic. So, you know, I don't know if my mom has PCOS, but I definitely think she should look into it just to make sure, you know. Um, I told my sister the same thing because, she, you know, a lot of times women who have this is within the family. So if your parents or somebody you know or close to you have something going on similar, check into it to make sure that you also don't have this going on. And just if you're dealing with emotional distress, especially around your cycle, definitely look into talking to a doctor to make sure your hormones are not off as well. There are so many things that 
can indicate that something is going on, don't ignore the signs. There's so many signs. If you feel something is not right, that is where I'm going to leave it off at. If you feel in your gut that something is not right, get that checked out and make sure that you get tests. Request tests. All my ladies out there who everything I just named to you sound like you could potentially have PCOS. I mean, you got the hair growth, you got the hair thinning, you got the, you know, the hormones that just not balancing out. You got, you know, infertility going on. You got irregular periods. You barely having periods. Go to your doctor and tell them, hey, I want to be checked for this. Can you? No, 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 no. I need you to check my blood. Like, take my blood and get these tests. Like, don't take no for an answer. Make because if my if this doctor would have never checked my blood for this stuff, I would have never knew I had it. And I never even knew I was supposed to got this checked. Like all these years, all this time, I've been telling all these other doctors about what I've been going through, and they never looked into it. They never took my blood, they never checked, they never did none of that. And this it took this one doctor to open my eyes up to realize that that's something that I could have been ahead of had I known. But now that I know, and I'm telling you, now you know. So now you know. Hey, I'm the I'm guinea pig, whatever, but at the end of the day, I want you guys to be well and healthy too. So if you feel like something is not right, tell your doctor, no, I'm going to be checked for this. And if they won't check it, go to another doctor, go to, go to the whatever. Like, you need to do what you got to do. If everything comes back normal, congratulations. Just focus on eating healthy, managing your stress, because to be honest, that can mess up everything too. Stress can really make your body out of balance. So, hey, get that in balance if that's the problem. Um, but if things don't come back normal, it's okay. Girl, it is okay. Let me tell you why. Because now you know the problem and you can get ahead of it and do what you got to do to fix it. And if it's nothing that can completely fix it, like PCOS is something that you can't get rid of, well, you know what you need to do to get it under control. And that's the thing about life. You want to live your best life. And you can't live your best life living a lie or living with living with things that you haven't decided to work on. Because now you're putting like, it's like trying to put, a, like trying to clean a nice, clean... How am I trying to explain it? I'm sucking with these analogies. It's like taking a dirty rag and trying to clean with. And no matter how much you clean it, it's still dirty. Like, it's not going... Like, you need to clean that rag. So, you need to cleanse yourself. You need to get yourself right so that whatever you do this moment for it, you're moving forward with the best possible you. And this is why I'm telling you guys, I know it's scary. Trust me, I get it. It's a lot of emotional ups and downs, and it's a lot. I mean, I have to go to the doctor a lot. But health is wealth, and you want to make sure you're the best you you can be. So anyway, I'm just going to end it at that. If you guys want to know more about my PCOS journey, if you guys want to know how these tinctures help or not help, um, let me know. I can do a video in more detail about what my numbers were, what they look like. I can do an update on my MRI. I have to get done MRI. I have to get done next week and things like that. I know I said this channel is going to switch to only travel, but I said inspiration as well. I'm going to put, honestly, y'all, I'm going to put what I want to put. Like, I, I, mm, I don't have no guidelines for my channel. I'm just going to put what I feel like it. Like, I just realized I can't, like, I, I have to put what I feel and I think this is going to be helpful. So I'm just going to put helpful things out. Like, you know, but anyway, um, yeah. So if you deal with PCOS, comment in the comment section below. Um, let me know what, you know what you did to find out and if you don't deal with it tell me like what's your cycles like do you feel like you need to go get checked out for something like have you tried to get checked and they wouldn't check you like just let's talk about anything in this category at all i don't care no limits nothing is off limits let me know um there's so much more i can tell you guys about this but this video will be way too long so it already is way too long but it needs to be said i might make this part one part two because this is long but I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching my channel. Be the advocate for your health. You deserve it. You are worth it. Don't forget to be the love in the world that you want to see. I love you guys so much. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.